Hello and welcome to today's October 1st daily news report as well as ongoing stimulus package information video. If you're a subscribed member of my community, then welcome back. And if you're not, consider subscribing right now. I want to keep you up to date on what's going on in Washington, D.C., what's going on with this next stimulus package, the U.S. economy, money investing, and much, much more. Well, the September $10,000 giveaway has come to an end. Uh, the 53 winners have all been chosen and emailed this morning, letting them know that they are a winner using the email they used to register for the contest. I want to thank uh, the September video sponsors for helping me to help members of my community with a little extra spending money. Now, there isn't a new contest as of today, so don't look for a link below. Uh, I'll be changing around the website. I'm also in some negotiations I thought would be settled by now uh, in order to do another giveaway uh, in the month of October. So as soon as I have that done, I will make that announcement. Uh, unlike the federal government, I don't have a money printing press. I ha actually have to go out and, and work for this money and earn it, uh, but it's my pleasure and Casey's pleasure uh, to give this money back to the winners. I love the reaction I get, and I just love helping people in my YouTube community. By the way, thank you guys so much for giving these videos a like. I really appreciate it, uh, and I just love bringing you guys the news. So here's here's the news for today. Secretary of Treasury Janet Yellen says the United States is headed for an economic catastrophe as they need to pay their bills by October 18th. Last night, an emergency vote was held in the Senate and the House of Representatives, and then a bill was sent up to President Biden's desk to immediately be signed. Uh, they used what's called a continuing resolution, which would temporarily fund the federal government without raising the debt ceiling until December of 2021. Now, in yesterday's video, I told you the fear of a shutdown uh, was a big deal, uh, but it wasn't the first time that the Senate and, and the House of Representatives have put the American people and the stock market through this stress. It's just something I think they enjoy doing, honestly. But uh, the bill has passed, as I expected it would, and so the government is not going to default and they are going to continue to be able to send checks out. However, Janet Yellen says, we've just kicked the can down the road and the debt issue is still an issue. She pr proposed uh, using her treasury authority to print a $1 trillion platinum coin uh, and deposit it at the Federal Reserve to pay down some of the debt. Now, it would, it would appease uh, the bank and allow the United States some breathing room. However, the shutdown uh, resolved, uh, with, with the shutdown resolved, excuse me, uh, the, the next 60 to 90 days, this debt issue is not really an issue now. And so they've, they've uh, turned off the coin minting machines and put them back to bed. Uh, however, there are many uh, legal economists that are saying that this is a legal strategy and could be used as high as $10 trillion. It wouldn't cause inflation because it wouldn't flood the economy with new money. It would just be a deposit on the books of the Federal Reserve. However, it's, it's not real money for the Federal Reserve. So it is kind of a sneaky way of paying debt with fake money, right? Fiat money. So anyway, uh, it's not something they're going to have to use, but it is a legal measure they could use in an emergency situation. All right, now speaking of being furious, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi has decided to postpone Monday's promised vote that was supposed to happen on Thursday for some day in the future next week. So it could be Monday of next week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We don't know yet, but it, it has been postponed. Now, moderate Democrats are fuming. They've been lied to and manipulated, and they say, we want our promised vote. Progressives say, we'll give you your vote just as soon as you vote for and help us pass the $3.5 trillion stimulus package. So they're essentially holding each other hostage on getting any of the Biden agenda passed. By not voting right away on the $1.2 trillion infrastructure bill, Nancy Pelosi has created a major divide within her own party, and these bills are struggling more to get passed than they were 30 days ago. 
uh, as of today, the U.S. Department of Transportation has run out of money. So they need this $1.2 trillion spending package passed right away. In order to get his uh, agenda going again, President Biden has canceled his entire schedule for today. Luckily, it was very light. He didn't have much planned. Uh, in order to go to the Capitol to meet with members of his own party, he wants to lay out for them how this helps the American people, how this helps the economy, how this helps the Democrat Party, and how they can use it as talking points to get votes in the 2022 election. This is according to multiple sources. Now, previously, Biden met privately with Senators Cinema and Manchin, but the meeting did nothing and Biden failed to persuade them to pass his agenda. However, Biden has not met with the moderates in the House of Representatives to discuss their concerns. So it is expected he will meet with them all day to hear them out and to discuss their concerns so that they can negotiate and find a path forward. Now, I won't have much to share with you about these meetings unless somebody breaks the silence and tells us because President Biden has requested that these be closed door meetings, no press allowed. Now, not all lobbyists are against the $3.5 trillion stimulus package. Uh, they are just against raising taxes on the businesses they represent. But one group is planning to spend $450,000 in ads to promote Biden's Build Back a, a Better uh, uh, agenda. And also, at the same time, to shame Senator Cinema and Manchin for not voting with their party members. Now, one person who seems unaffected in his commitment to get the stimulus package passed is Senator Bernie Sanders. Sanders says, whether we get everything we want or not, we will get billionaires to pay their fair share of taxes. He then made several key comments, which I'll share with you right now. Sanders said, let me let you in on a little secret. You ready? The federal government is capable of standing up to powerful special interests and fighting for the needs of the working class people. The billionaire class does not want it to happen. Too bad, we're gonna get it done, right? So he, he's fired up, he's still committed. So Bernie Sanders wants to use the full force of the United States government to stand up to the billionaires on your behalf. Now, Sanders decided not to say the stuff Biden and Pelosi were saying, like the $3.5 trillion bill will cost $0. He's smarter than that, right? So he stuck to his guns about paying for it year by year by making the billionaires and the big companies pay their fair share, right? Uh, this is a much more intelligent debate, right? This is what he had to say. Let me be as clear as I can be. The budget reconciliation is paid for. How will that happen? We will finally end the days of tax loopholes and tax evasion by the billionaire class of this country. Yes, they will finally pay their fair share of taxes. Sanders said after 40 years of trying, now is the moment to change the country. He believes he finally has the support of the people and the Democrat Party. Now, I say this because you may or may not know this, but Bernie Sanders is not a Democrat. He's actually an independent that happens to vote with Democrats on issues. But this is what he had to say. What 95% of the Democrat caucus wants, and more importantly, the American people want, is two pieces of legislation, which, yes, will not only rebuild the physical infrastructure, but will finally invest in the long-neglected needs of our country's working class. Let's do it, right? Now, Sanders went on to say, this isn't a matter of law or the right to change policy to help out the country. It comes down to courage to tell the billionaires, the country hasn't done enough for you. Now you need to do something for the country. This is what he said. Now is the time, finally, for Congress to stand up for working families and have the courage to take on big money interests and wealthy campaign contributors who have so much power over the economic and political life of the country. Okay? So he's basically saying, listen, Democrats, you've allowed the billionaires and the big businesses to get in your pockets. 
you need to you need to go back to having courage and working for the people, not for the billionaires. Now, some Democrats have proposed removing the child tax credit checks uh, in order to save money. But Senator Sanders says if it's up to him, they will stay and that he will fight to keep them in the bill. Now, I don't get um, the checks personally, um, but I, I think that they're a good idea, right? It, it's not like the families weren't going to get that money as a lump sum. So why not give it to them one twelfth at a time throughout the year to help with the cost of raising kids? So Sanders is going to fight for this key issue to remain. All right, now Mark W. from the community says, Stephen, why are you taking time in your report to tell us about China's energy problems? Stick to the United States issues or I will get my news elsewhere. Well, that, that seems a bit harsh, Mark. Um, I'm sure no one agrees with 100% of what I say, um, but I think uh, it's important to include what's going on in China every now and then. It's not every report, right? We live in a global economy. If China becomes expensive, in a few months, the United States becomes expensive. If shipping prices and gas prices go up where stuff is manufactured, then the prices of stuff ultimately goes up where those very items are sold. So China's energy crisis, defaulting on debt, having a, 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 a drop in their manufacturing becomes United States issues. Not to believe this is naive, and that's why I include it in my report. Now, I'm trying to let my community know what could be company, coming so that they're not caught off guard. I also spoke of Europe, the United Kingdom, and Russia because this is a global issue. I did not only talk about China, but what happens around the world happens in the United States. I hope that makes sense, but thank you for your comment and the opportunity to clarify that. All right, now over on my community tab on my main YouTube page, I did a poll on which year was harder and weirder? According to you guys, 66% of you said that 2021 was harder or weirder. And 34% of you said that 2020 was harder or weirder. Now, honestly, I expected those to be reversed, but I have to agree on some level, 2021 has been a very weird year. All right, now this is my update for today. As I know more, I will definitely come on and share more. Um, I'm going to be working through the weekend uh, negotiating with these sponsors so that I can do another giveaway and help people in the community with a little of extra spending money. We are making progress. I know it's slower than anyone wants, and I am frustrated with uh, Nancy Pelosi and uh, all of the shenanigans in Washington, D.C., but I do believe something is going to get done, and I'll be here to report the progress all along the way. I hope you have a great weekend. Unless something big comes on, I likely won't come on and do another video until Monday. But until then, I want to remind you that you are amazing and tell you how much I appreciate you being in my community. Keep your heads up, have a great weekend, and I'll see you on the next video.